So selamat datang, greetings, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, downtown Santa Barbara studio of Gamelan Sina Surya. Uh, we're an, an Indonesian music ensemble, was founded in Santa Barbara 2002. I'm Richard North, uh, I also direct the UC Santa Barbara Gamelan Ensemble since 2015. So both groups study and play traditional music of Indonesia which, by the way, is the largest island nation in the world, although it seems like nobody in the United States has ever heard of it. Uh, also number four population on the planet, and uh, most of them live on the island of Java. This is music from Java. Um, the modern Republic of Indonesia is made up of a bunch of ancient kingdoms, and the oldest one uh, of all 23 of them is on the north coast of Java, uh, is named Tirbon, and we're playing music from Tirbon. It's founded around 1400, and I've been studying, teaching, performing uh, this music and helping to revive it uh, since 1976, um, and it's been a lot of fun along the way. Um, so, Gamalan Sinar Surya, this is our third year at the UCSB, UCSB uh, Summer Music Festival, and this year, as you can see, we're doing it remotely because of COVID. We have our masks at the ready. Um, there's all kinds of music from this area. We're doing an exciting style of gamelan, a five-tone orchestra called Gamelan Prawa. So it's usually listening music or it's the accompaniment for puppet theater uh, and also exciting mask dancing, which will later uh, feature a dancer, Noah Malik. And uh, we also are lucky to have a guest artist today, a uh, fantastic uh, Indonesian suling bamboo flute player sitting in front, uh, Mr. Endurukandi. So our first piece uh, is an old piece that I learned back in 1976, but it's recently become popular again. It's called Banjar Melati. And Melati is a jasmine flower which is used for weddings and used for blessing ceremonies. So this piece is supposed to be uh, blessings to both the audience and to the performers. It's sort of a complicated treatment with six different melodic sections. So uh, I hope you enjoy our first piece today, Bandar Melati.
So we're, uh, we had a especially beautiful Suling play by uh, Gang Eru in the front there who uh, just came to town for today's performance. He's a, a recording artist uh, in Indonesia, very highly respected, so we're very glad to have Gang Eru here. Uh, next, we're going to do uh, an ancient village piece um, from a style of music called Gong Renteng. Um, the name of the piece is Rengong Buyut, which means Song of the Ancestors. But even though it's a very revered and ancient piece, it's also really lively and fun. There's a lot of interlocking rhythmic vocals called uh, Sengak, which is uh, a big part of the music. So uh, I hope you enjoy this piece, Rengong Buyut. That piece is, is so fun to play. It's just hundreds of years old, and it, and it somehow feels very contemporary. It's very lively. So, good um, to long, yes. A real contrast with uh, boisterous and uh, lively village piece, that last one, is uh, a piece from the Royal Palace. And this is a very calm and serene and meditative piece called Moblong. Um, this piece is is usually played uh, for one of the princesses to um, help her feel calm and serene before the wedding ceremony. So it's preparation for a wedding. Um, those of you who've ever gotten married, you know how, 
how nervous that can be just beforehand. So it's a very international situation. But a uh, moblong is, is played for those pur purposes just to calm everybody down. But the piece was lost uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, luckily, uh, my teacher had sent me an old recording of it. So uh, when I went back, I was able to bring that piece back. So they have it in the palace now. So it's, uh, it's now revived. So very peaceful and uh, lovely piece called Moblong. So we're going to play, uh, after that calm and serene sort of meditative moblong, we're going to play uh, a, a really lively piece, uh, also from the ancient Gongrenteng repertoire, one of the oldest uh, ensembles we have uh, from the region. Uh, this has got a lot of uh, strong drumming, evidently loud motorcycles, uh, <laughs> which frankly reminds us of Indonesia, pretty much a part of the atmosphere over there. Anyway, a lot of drumming, cymbals, and a lot more of that uh, rhythmic vocal interlocking called Sengak, and the piece is called Tina Nanagi.
so you notice all this commotion of moving around. Um, gamelan music, it's very different from Western classical music, although it's about the same vintage. This music, uh, most of the pieces are like the 1600s. And um, so it's, it's pretty old, but it's, it's a, you can tell it's a lot less formal. And one of the things, if you're a gamelan musician, uh, you're supposed to be able to play just about everything. So there's a lot of moving around. So people don't specialize like I'm a violinist or I'm a clarinet player. Uh, if you can only play one instrument, you're not considered to be particularly good. There's a lot of different regional styles of gamelan throughout Indonesia. And there's the famous gamelan of Bali. There's Sundanese gamelan. There's Chibun gamelan. There's Central Javanese gamelan. But um, it's not as well known that the neighboring country of Malaysia also has its own gamelan style. And this started in the early 1800s. Um, it's in a couple of the royal palaces in northeastern Malaysia. So we're going to play a piece from the Malaysian gamelan repertoire now. It's called Timang Burong. And Timang Burong is a play to accompany uh, a classical court dance where the dancers uh, imitate the, the delicate movements of the, the uh, bird of paradise, a sort of heavenly bird image. So it's, it's very delicate and calm compared to a lot of the Indonesian gamelan. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. This is Malaysian gamelan. The piece is Timang Burong.
So um, I hope you can feel a really different atmosphere of the Malaysian music from the Indonesian one. It's much more sparse, has less instruments. It's, it's very calm, but it's also bright and cheerful in that kind of way. It's, it's a largely a unknown form of gamelan. So we do teach it at UCSB as well. Um, <coughs> so back to Indonesian music now, back to the old north coast Java kingdom of Tirbon. Uh, we're going to play uh, a piece barred from the topeng or mask dancing repertoire. Um, the Chibon area is actually very famous for its mask dances. Uh, there's, uh, we'll talk more about that a little later, but uh, this is one of the pieces from that repertoire. We'll, we'll use it as a listening piece here. It's very popular as an opening piece and closing piece. It's a combination of all the pattern, interlocking playing, and uh, melody. So you'll hear a uh, the musician singing along with some of the melodies. Uh, it, it, it's a very charming piece. Hope you enjoy it. It's called Gonjing. Thank you. 
Gunjing, uh, beloved peace in the Tirbon area on the north coast of West Java. Can you get through here, honey? Yeah. So I mentioned that the mass dancing tradition in Java is thought to go back at least 500 years, maybe as much as 700 years. Um, <laughs> come on through. <laughs> So there are uh, five classical dances, always performed in the same sequence. And uh, you can actually see them on the wall there. Um, they go from, they try to, to depict or exemplify different stages in human life from birth until old age, and also different aspects of human character from purity and wisdom to the other extreme of maybe selfishness and materialism. So that's, uh, th there's a lot of symbolism uh, in the dance. So of the five classical dances, this is the most popular one. This is usually the one that's done last. It's called Topenklana. And Klana shows a person uh, at the time of their life when they're their peak of their power. But they've also been sort of, uh, let's say, tempted and, and trapped by their love of materialism. So it, it's partially a, a negative example. Um, the, the dancer is uh, Mr. Noah Malik. Uh, Noah has been studying uh, traditional Chibon mass dancing for some time. He's traveled to Indonesia several times, so working on this dance. And uh, he's also been playing uh, gamelan uh, off and on with us since he was 10 years old. So he has a, a lot of experience. But this is uh, the most lively uh, dance in the entire repertoire, and it's very fun to, to accompany, and his movements are just astonishing. And you'll notice a direct correlation between the, the drum patterns and his movements, so you can kind of watch for that. So uh, this is uh, Mass Dancing from Tirubon, North Coast Java. This is Topeng Klana. Thank you. 
It's really a lot of fun to play. Oh, we got more moving to do here. Okay. Also, we can cool off a little bit after all that exertion. <laughs> Uh, a lot of times the gamelan performance in Indonesia will last all night, especially if it's a puppet performance. They start around 8 or 9 in the evening, go to maybe 4 in the morning. And uh, like anybody else, people fall asleep. <laughs> so this is a piece that's played as the next to the last piece of performances uh, to let people know it's time to wake up, <laughs> just in case they have to be uh, sleeping. So this is it's a, a rice culture and a rice economy. So there's a lot of rice farmers who attend these things. Uh, this piece is called Patsul Goang. And Patsul is a rice hoe. Goang means it has a little chip out of it. So it's the old rice hoe. So it's sort of a pastoral theme. So when this is played as the next to the last piece, this lets the rice farmers know, oh, time to wake up, <laughs> time to get ready, go home, clean up, and then go out to a, a day of working in the rice fields. So it's sort of nostalgic. Uh, piece it, it's gentle and it's sweet so hope you enjoy it the uh, patul goan Thank you. 
Well, this uh, brings us to the end of our performance of traditional Indonesian gamelan music. Um, we want to thank uh, UCSB Music Department. This is uh, our third opportunity for performing at the Summer Music Festival. Uh, thanks uh, especially to Anthony, uh, Ali, and Louis for all your technical work and to all the support we get from the department. Um, this is a community group here that's open to uh, anyone, we're in downtown Santa Barbara. We also have classes in the uh, music department at UCSB. We teach traditional gamelan music. We meet on Tuesday and Thursday evenings. It's open to the entire community. So if you have any interest in it, I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun to play this music. But if you have any interest in it, you can just contact the music department directly. Our last piece is called Monggang. It's a traditional closing piece. As with the opening piece, it's considered a blessing piece for the audience, uh, including those of you at home. And uh, for us here, the musicians, so uh, we want to thank you uh, for your kind attention. Special thanks also to our dancer, Noel Malik, and uh, yes, <laughs> and, and uh, to our guest artist, uh, Kang Eru, uh, a tremendous swing player. So uh, we're going to say goodbye with this piece, Mong Kang.